of the early life of a remarkable Englishman who was honoured in China as a hero of World War II. Whilst largely unheard of in his native country, at St George's School in Harpenden, his legacy is remembered with pride. The youngest child of a wealthy London tailor and his wife, George Hogg was born on the 26th of February 1915 at Gred Gables in the then village of Harpenden. He grew up a few hundred metres away at Wayfarings and attended St George's School in the village. Here he excelled both in the classroom and on the rugby pitch. Whilst at St George's, he proved to be a natural leader, captaining the school rugby side. Every morning, George walked through this doorway over which can be seen the school motto, aim higher. Would it be these words which would lead him to greatness? Miss Helen Barton is headmistress of St George's School, Harpenden. Uh, Will has come to ask us today about our motto, uh, but also about and how that applies to us as a school. Our motto is aim higher and it's cast in stone above one of the doors which is in our buildings. Uh, but the ironic thing is, is that it's not actually our motto. It came from a school which was previously here and we have adopted it. We've adopted it for a number of reasons. We think that everybody in life should aim as high as they can do. It's not about being the highest. It's not about being the best at everything. It's about being the best that you can be. And that's what we try and instill in everybody in our school, whether that's through academic study or serving other people or being part of our community, both within our school and within that wider community that we serve. We hope that by doing this, we can instill in our young people an opportunity to serve others and to be good people within our community. Proving a leader in all aspects of school life, George was chosen as head boy at the age of 17 and captain of the first 15 rugby team. He would embark on a relationship with the head girl, Winifred Nelson, his first serious girlfriend. David Waters is an assistant head and history teacher at St George's School, Harpenden. I've been here for 16 years and most of that time I was either leading history or a member of the history department. And throughout that time we've been really interested in a former pupil called George Hogg, who first came to St George's in 1928, having previously done his prep school in Switzerland. His family moved to Harpenden and they lived by the common and from 1928 until 1934, George Hogg attended St George's School through his secondary schooling years as a day student. Um, he was very talented, very intelligent. He seemed to be good at everything he tried. Um, he was in the Gym 8 cricket team, rugby team. In fact, he led both of those. He also won a scholarship to Oxford to study PPE, or in those days called Greats. Uh, he captained the Wollum College rugby team at Oxford. So he was sort of an all-round success, really. Once George Hogg left St George's, he went to study politics, philosophy and economics at Wadham College, Oxford, for three years. From the exciting atmosphere of the lecture hall to the quiet of the campus gardens, Oxford would be the perfect environment for George to continue to aim higher. Geoffrey Hackney is keeper of the archives for Wadham College, Oxford. Hello, I'm Geoffrey Hackney. I'm formerly a law fellow in Wadham College and now I'm retired. I'm the keeper of the college archives. Um, I've been asked to tell you a little bit about George Hogg. George Hogg came to Wadham in 1934 to read the relatively new school, as it was in those days, the degree of PPE, politics, philosophy and economics. And he stayed here for the duration of the course and got a decent second class degree. While he was here, I think he was spending most of his spare time in convivial sporting activities. He played sport both in the winter, where he played with some distinction in the rugby club, 
and then also played cricket in the summer. There's no other record of him having done anything else, but those were presumably um, fairly full-time occupations for him. And all the evidence is that he had a perfectly good time here. But that, I think, is the most I can say for you. David Waters explains how George Hogg ended up in China. And then in 1937, he decided to have a gap year and he went with his auntie, who was a famous pacifist called Muriel Lester, and travelled across um, the Pacific, having already hitchhiked through America. Um, he was interested in travelling and seeing the world. Uh, no doubt he could have got a job in London eventually, but when he was in China, um, he found lots of things to be very shocking and noteworthy and started writing as a journalist for The Guardian and published quite a few works. Uh, and that's when he decided to stay in China. So Hogg was a really important figure in China, um, and there were statues made of him, and he's very well remembered in this town called Shandang, where he set up a school. Um, however, the statues of him uh, were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s, and his story was lost uh, until the late 1980s, when um, a journalist for the Daily Telegraph called James McManus happened to hear of a a story of, of older men travelling to the middle of nowhere in China to go and sing some nursery rhymes. And he decided to follow them into Shandang. It's about uh, 2,000 miles into the Chinese interior. Um, and he witnessed something quite extraordinary. Um, a group of 40 to 50 men in their 50s and 60s singing um, English nursery rhymes and stories, which they'd been taught by George Holt when he run this school, uh, which he set up tried to set up anyway, very much along the lines of St George's when he took it over in the 1940s. And then he delved deeper, he found out that these, these boys were saved by Hogg and they all went on to live great lives and that Hogg of course himself lost his life. So it's a real story of sacrifice and courage. Um, this story then became a book and a film and it's a story which we still teach at St George's to this day. Um, the legacy of it also is manifest through exchanges and trips and fellowship with Chinese students. Many of us have been to China and been to the, the school which Hogg set up and uh, we've also set up exchanges with students in Beijing. So the impact of Hogg has been profound and his legacy goes on. It's also now um, part of a scholarship through um, the Sino-Anglo-Chinese Society which um, sponsors a Hogg Fellowship and there's also an annual essay competition um, for George Hogg uh, in the name of um, Saku, which we enter every year through the sixth form. So his legacy is manifest in many ways, and we try and remember his story of courage and self-sacrifice. During the last few years of his life, George would teach the boys English nursery rhymes like Three Blind Mice. However, tragically, in 1945, aged just 30, he stubbed his toe playing basketball with the children and this developed into the tetanus that would eventually kill him. For the boys in his care and the memories he made along the way, George Hogg died a hero who would inspire us all to always aim higher. Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they rise. Three blind mice.